Hello and welcome back to GOT Good Old Tech. I'm Mark and today is part two. We're going to continue talking about retro technology and today we're going to cover more on the Android side of things, my history. So stay tuned to the end. Thank you for being here. All right, so now as far as my experience with technology and going back, um, you know, I didn't have all that experience. That you, I didn't get a GPS until, I guess I used those Garmin things, but um, I, I really never got into them all that much. So before uh, the smartphones, I, I had a uh, Razer 3V. That was the big thing back then, a Razer flip phone. You can actually plug a headphone into it, and you can store music on it. Matter of fact, I took a trip to, uh, where was I? I went to Japan, and I used that, and I had all the Harry Potter books on it. So I had a here, while I'm <laughs> walking the city, touring the, the, the place, I was listening to Harry Potter story on a, on a Razor <laughs> flip phone. Really enjoyed that phone. And it actually was capable of data. Um, because when I got back, I remember um, getting a pocket PC. Uh, it was an HP iPac. You remember those? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they had the stylus built in. You pull out a little plastic thing. Okay. And um, it actually connected to Wi-Fi, which was kind of interesting. But it was extremely, it was like dial-up. <laughs> yeah. It did not, I didn't, it was not a cellular one. It was just a pocket PC I carried around. And I think I mainly used it for media consumption, playing a little video here and there, playing games, writing some notes um, in meetings and such. But I didn't really um, use it. Oh, yeah. And it also had a, a IR on it in it. So I had fun turning on my TV. I had a little bit of fun with that. But I had those pocket PCs for um, a couple years. Had it, had, Two or three different kinds. And then um, with the Razer, I, I found out that I can actually connect my pocket PC to it with a wire. So I was able to buy a cable and connect it to it. So then I had mobile uh, internet through my Razer and my pocket PC. So that was pretty cool. Back then, I was uh, part of AOL. You've got mail. So I did a lot of AOL. Um, actually, back then, it was probably when I, I, I met my wife and we were doing messaging through AOL. So when I was not at home and I was mobile, I'd use that setup to uh, continue chatting with her. Because you didn't have a phone, you could just pull out and do it with. My first smartphone, because I was using a pocket PC with my Razor, until you kept boasting about that iPhone, telling me how great that iPhone was. Um, but when, when I was hearing it, I felt like he can't do much more than I can do. And, you know, he has to be on Wi-Fi to do anything. You know, there wasn't really anything over 2G <laughs> cellular that you could browse with. So it was all... So I didn't find much interest in, to, to an iPhone or... or Upgrading to a smartphone until the iPhone 3GS. I remember you kept telling about you got to watch these things. Watch, you know, Steve Jobs, what they call them, uh, Keynote. And I got excited about that 3G. So that was my first iPhone. And I really liked it because it did have the GPS built in. And um, it was a phone. And I was able to get rid of my pocket PC. You know, as much as I loved it. Once that iPhone came out and it had everything built into it, I got hooked. So I stayed with iPhone all the way up to the 4, I think the 4S. And, and that's when I started managing a Radio Shack. And we were selling every single smartphone on the planet through Radio Shack as a manager. And I think that's about the time I started to need these. With the iPhone 4, I found out that my eyesight was going bad because it kept getting blurrier and blurrier. And when I what I realized was my arm was no longer long enough to put it in view. 
<laughs> so I ended up having to get glasses. Sure. And, then, and then I realized, and then, you know, Apple, the iPhone just kept being three and a half, three and a half. And I saw all these four inch and four and a half inch phones coming out on Android. So on the Android side, they had the larger phones. So yeah, I went with Android and I really enjoyed it. And I went with a four inch. Um, and I think looking at my notes here, the first Android I had was called a uh, Motorola Atrix. And you could get a lap dock with it. Mm. And I bought the lap dock. It, it, it's like a, a laptop and you plug the phone into the back of it and it comes out on the full screen. And now you have 4G connection with your phone on a full size screen, 1080p. And it worked as a laptop. So that was pretty cool. So yes. I used that for a while, um, but that got outdated pretty quick. Um, I moved on from that, and the next thing I got was an HTC One. I don't know if you remember that phone. HTC One it was the first phone to come out with uh, two speakers on the front, stereo sound, and it was loud, especially compared to all the other phones. I remember in the Radio Shack, we had that. We didn't put a, a, a sample phone. We put a real phone up up there and plugged it in and had the stereo speaker playing music, you know, to draw people into it. It was also the first phone, and you could check me on this, you know, you do if you want to, but it was the first phone to have moving photos. So that 4.7 inch screen was really huge and I enjoyed that. Um, and then from there, I went on to uh, some Galaxy phones, Oh, I think it was the S series Samsung phones. You know, I used those for a couple years until they came out with the Note. You know, the first Note, uh, oh, Note 3, 4, 5, I didn't really get into. I got, I finally got into it with the 5. Now, the Note reminded me of the Pocket PC. You had a stylus, right? right? And you could take notes, and it did all kinds of things, and that was a really, really good phone. So I stuck with the Note series all the way up until the last one, was, which was a Note uh, 20 Ultra. And I really enjoyed that phone. I even stuck through with the burning Note 7, one that caught on fire. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that? Oh, no. Battery kept on fire. Airplane. They, they, they evacuated airplanes because someone had an iPhone or had a, a Note 7. You weren't allowed on airplanes if you had a Note 7. That was crazy. And I, and I remember funny. they want, they uh, wrote me and I, I returned it and they sent me another one. They were supposedly uh, fixing them. And then uh, shortly after that, they asked for that second one back. Hmm. So I had to give up the, the note. I went to uh, the note 20. And then after that, that's when I started seeing stuff like this uh, surface duo right here, you know, saw this come out and I thought that is really cool it has it comes with well it doesn't come with but you can use a stylus on it or a pin the surface pin on it and it did everything that the note would do except no place to store the pin you know, at that point I thought well if I got to carry a pin separately and they're giving up on their note line I went with I went with this but um, mm -hmm. I kept my note and used this as a, as a companion device to see if I liked it. And this is for my viewers out there that are interested in the Surface Duo. I bought this using it as a secondary device. I did not buy it as my daily driver. And I bought it cheap because um, the Surface Duo 2 was announced. So the price was dropping on these. And I think I bought one for around 375 and I used it, and the software was still garbage. But I, after a while, they started improving it. But I really like the format. I like the, the function and the, and the capability of it so much that when they came out with the Surface Duo 2, that was one of the first phones that I ever paid full price for. All other phones, mm -hmm. I bought them on plans or whatnot. I remember back in the day, me and you were both, we were getting a new phone every day. Or not every day, every year. <laughs> we were getting a yeah, new phone. Year. You know, so I finally got this thing and um, and I really enjoyed it. But when the Surface Duo 2 came out, I sold my Note and I sold the Surface Duo 1 to pay the 
sixteen ninety nine for the Surface Duo Two. Oof. Yeah, that was big. That was huge, and it came out still with a little bit of problems, but they did get better with it over time. So um, that's what I paid for this laptop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, I would never do that again, and I won't do that again. Um, because I had been buying devices used for the longest time, because you could save all kinds of money. So um, when I decided to give up my Duo Two, um, I bought the uh, Galaxy Fold Four, which I'll do videos on later, and um, I bought it used. That thing new, and it's a 512 gigabyte storage, and new that thing's $2,300. I paid a thousand bucks for it. Got two hundred and forty dollars worth of cases and two stylus with it. So I got a really good deal. Um, that's the only way to buy these phones these days is get a good deal. You got to wait. It's only six months old, but I still got a really good deal. So that's where I'm at today. I'm with a fold, and you have moved on to what phone? Oh, the latest iPhone 14, I think, Pro. Max? Yeah, you started going with the larger phones when they first came out? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm going. Actually, I bought the first large one, and then I took it back because I was like, it's too large. Here's the original. Okay. Yeah. So I was like, it's, it's too large. So I think I'd returned it. and But then the next year, I'm like, forget it. My eyesight, like you were talking about, need the big phone. Yeah. So, yeah, I'll always get the big one. Yeah. And that, that was my main push for reason for leaving Apple. And uh, during all that, I tell, tell folks out there, I actually worked for Apple for a few years. Mm -hmm. I worked for Apple supporting all those devices, the computers, the iPhones, the iPads. <laughs> and guess what? During that time, I did not own an iPhone. <laughs> I didn't care for the iPhones during that time because they were still too mm -hmm. small. What do you see as far as the future for these uh, devices, and what are you interested in, in seeing in the next? The next uh, iPhone? Um, well, it's what they always do, better cameras, faster speeds. I know a lot of people want to see the underscreen fingerprint reader. I, With Face ID, I don't have any preference for that. Um, How about notchless? Yeah, that would be kind of nice. Yeah. Yeah. But I have the I the dynamic island now. Mm hmm Yeah. Yeah. They got you with that one, didn't they? Yeah. <laughs> it's marketing. Marketing. <laughs> oh well. Yeah. All right. Well, Tim, I appreciate your time with me today. And um, I'm sure everybody else out there does. I tell you, audience, if, if you like what you saw here today and you want to hear some more technology questions, because we both have a lot more than just phones to talk about. You heard him mention his tablet. I have different tablets, computers, and we have lots of technology outside of personal devices. Uh, he has an, he is a, a, an RV. I have an RV, and we have a lot of technology built into our, our devices, our camping equipment. Um, outside outside of uh, the cellular things and uh, of course in our office space as well so there's a lot of things that we can talk about Tim's got a lot of history on technology if you enjoyed it and you want to see him back let me know in the comments below all right and uh, please give him a thumbs up <laughs> <laughs> appreciate you coming on to Tim tonight and um, discussing these things with me I enjoyed it Sure. Thanks. It was a good time. Thanks for inviting me. Well, that about wraps things up for this episode. Hey, let us know in the comments, you know, as we went down memory lane, what did you think about? What was your favorite device? Did you switch from Apple to Android or Android to Apple? And what do you look forward to in the future on our smartphone devices or other technology for that matter? Tim and I have got, both got a lot of experience with technology of the past. And we're looking forward to technology in the future. So let us know what you'd like to see. And we'll see what we can do to bring that to you. If you like what you saw, please give us some love down below and like this video. Also share it with your friends. And most of all, subscribe. 
We want to know who's out there and want to know if you're enjoying this content. If you haven't tried any retro and you can get your hands on some old technology, like I always say, if you haven't already, you've got to try it.